one time when we were playing at the UFO club with, um, we were opening for Pink Floyd, and uh, uh, that's when Joe Boyd came down to see us. And there was this group of very nice Muswell Hill grammar school boys and a girl playing American music. Leonard Cohen songs and Richard Farina songs and Bob Dylan songs all being done in a kind of West Coasty rock style. And then came the guitar solo, and Richard just played the most amazing solo. played a solo which quotes from Django, from Charlie Christian, you know, incredibly sophisticated little solo. And that really amazed me, I mean, the breadth of his sophistication. On stage, Richard was very shy. He didn't talk a lot. Um, he seemed very serious, very absorbed. He was kind of hunched over his guitar, you know, playing very concentrated on his music. And Richard was age 17. And so, you know, at the end of the gig, I was in the dressing room saying, would you guys like to make a record? Fairport Convention's first records were hip enough, although they didn't exactly set the charts alive. But these were some of the best times for what was fast becoming a rollicking good time band, playing universities and festivals all over the country. These were the sort of days when beer money, or whatever other substances you purchased with it, actually seemed to be enough. Richard was rapidly emerging as the main writer in the band, alongside new vocalist Sandy Denny. Although it was the era of peace, love and brown rice, his songs already possessed a wearier fatalism. At the time that, that I was the one that was singing his songs, he was developing his style, he was learning his art. He spent a lot of time in his room writing songs. I think the special ones at that time were few and far between. Uh, but Meet on the Ledge was a very special song. We used to say There'd come the day We'd all be making songs Or oh, finding better words These ideas never lasted long The ways of Along the road, the air is growing thin. Too many friends who tried, swept off this mountain with the wind. Meet on the ledge, I'm gonna meet on the ledge. When my time is up, I'm gonna. All my friends Meet on the ledge We're gonna meet on the ledge If you really mean it It all comes round the day I always thought of the ledge as a, as a ledge you jump off A ledge you could stand on prior to jumping so people could, could talk you down um, or not what he's saying is it's, it's a risky business being alive. You know, it's, uh, this is all, this is, this is all, <laughs> you know, this is all a sham. This is all paper thin, it could go tomorrow. Meet on the ledge, we're gonna meet on the ledge. 
my time is up, I'm gonna see all of my friends. It's on the ledge, gonna meet on the ledge. If you really mean it, it all comes round again. The way is up along the road, the air is getting thin. Too many friends who died blown off this mountain with the wind. The meat on the ledge. It's about music and, and artists. How people just give themselves to what they've got to do and get blown away by it sometimes. Either drink drugs or, or, or insanity. Or just lousy, lousy luck. It was just another drive home after a gig um, in Birmingham, a club called Mothers in Erdington that we'd done numerous times before. It was a regular thing. And uh, of course, it was a matter of course to, to drive back to London after shows. And Harvey, our tour manager, had been ill all day with an upset stomach, um, was definitely not feeling himself. And nobody really knows what caused it, but uh, he lost control of the vehicle. Uh, I was sitting in the front and, and awake, so I kind of saw it all happen. Uh, very scary. Um, van somersaulted. I was out. We were all out. We were out the windows, out the doors, everything. When I came to, I don't know how many minutes later, I was the only person left inside the van. Everybody else had been ejected. <laughs> The crash caused the deaths of drummer Martin Lamble and Richard's girlfriend, designer Jeannie Franklin. Uh, you know, you, you, you question your theories of existence uh, when young people die. You know, it's, it's a very hard thing to bear. You, know, you, you, you look for the meaning in that, and the answers aren't easy. But when, when people die, you miss them. You know. When Unhalfbricking, the band's third LP, recorded before the crash, was released, the remaining Fairports got together to consider whether they still had a future. Because we were so shaken up, it was very hard to, to see sense at the time. And uh, I think we resolved at that point to, to really, um, to, to, to kind of reinvent ourselves as um, interpreters of traditional music. We conceived Legion Leaf to explore the world of the traditional song as interpreted by a young English rock and roll band and make hundreds of year old songs sound like they were written yesterday and also at the same time to to write new songs but have them sound as if they were hundreds of years old. We went down into uh, the countryside into Hampshire and our manager Joe Boyd rented a lovely big Queen Anne house and that's where we started to form folk rock music. Fairport, already joined by Sandy Denny, the great folk singer, had now enlisted Dave Swarbrick, the folk scene's leading fiddle player. Although they were influenced by the American roots music of the band, amongst others, Fairport looked to the traditions and mysteries in their own back garden. So tell me now, young Tamlin, she says, if a mortal man you be, I'll tell you no lies, sweet Margaret, says he. I was christened as good as thee, as thee. I was christened as good as thee. We did kind of think that, that when we did electric versions of, of traditional tunes, um, um, that, that this will be something that, that people would recognise as their own. Their own culture, contemporised and made a bit more vital. And the stars, they blazed like day. And the queen of Elfin, she give a thrilling cry. Young Tamerlan's away, away, young Tamerlan's away.